Before I contrast classical and operant conditioning, let's talk about features that are common to both. Well, for both, we can have extinction. In the case of classical conditioning, we present the conditioned stimulus on its own without the unconditioned stimulus, and it no longer elicits a conditioned response. In the case of operant conditioning, behaviour is ceases when it is no longer reinforced or punished over time. We can have spontaneous recovery for both. So in the case of classical conditioning, after a rest period, we represent the conditioned stimulus, and once again, it elicits a conditioned response after a period of extinction, of course. We can have stimulus discrimination and generalization for both. Make sure, though, that you use the appropriate language when talking about either of these. So in the case of stimulus generalization for classical conditioning, we have a stimulus that is similar to the conditioned stimulus that elicits a conditioned response. In the case of discrimination, well, only the original conditioned stimulus will elicit a conditioned response, not similar stimulus. In the case of operant conditioning, we could have stimulus discrimination. Let's say when a boy is punished for throwing stones, he might think it's okay to throw sticks. That would be stimulus discrimination. Generalisation, if the boy thinks, all right, I've been punished for throwing stones, can't throw sticks, can't throw tennis balls, can't throw Nerf balls. So let's talk about now features of classical conditioning and operant conditioning that are clearly different. Dichotomous. Before going into detail, let's just give a little summary of the differences between classical and operant conditioning. Well, in terms of the nature of the response, it's an involuntary reflexive response for classical conditioning as opposed to operant conditioning where the response is usually voluntary. In terms of timing of the stimulus, well, for classical conditioning, the stimulus precedes the response. For operant conditioning, the stimulus is given after the response. In terms of the role of the learner, classical conditioning, the learner is passive in the process. For operant conditioning, the learner is active. We'll go into detail now. now. So in terms of the nature of the response, for classical conditioning, the response is generally reflexive. For instance, Pavlov's dog salivating at the sound of a bell in anticipation of food. Key point is, the response is often controlled by the autonomic nervous system, whether it be salivation, an eye blinked, a fear, anxiety response to a phobic stimulus, etc. For operant conditioning, the response is generally more active and voluntary. For instance, when I'm driving home and I go through a or past a 40k per hour sign in the school zone, I have the choice of slowing down or ignoring it. When you find out you've got a sack next week, you have the choice of studying hard for it or not. If your boss rings you up and asks you to do a shift at work, you have the choice of going to work in order to achieve the consequence of getting paid. So the behaviour for operant conditioning is based on goal-directed behaviour. So you'll do it more if you want to get paid, if you want to get good marks, if you want to get a compliment. You'll do it less if you don't want to be punished, i.e. given a detention, fined, demerit points, etc. So behaviour is directed by the decision-making part of your brain, your frontal lobe, so the central nervous system. In terms of the timing of the stimulus and response for classical conditioning, stimulus first, response second. For Pavlov and the dog, stimulus first, sound of a bell. Leads to the response second, salivation. In the case of someone with a phobia, let's say of spiders, stimulus first, maybe seeing a spider crawling on the wall, response second, a fear anxiety response. For operant conditioning, other way around. Response or the behaviour first, and then the stimulus. So let's say I drive too fast through the 40k zone on the way home. That's my response. Please see me. They pull me over, the stimulus is given to me, a fine and some demerit points. 
your response for a sack next week. Might be studying really hard, doing a good job responding to the questions. That's your response. The stimulus is given to you, an A+. Plus. Key point though for both, the timing. They need to be close together so that the learner can make the association between the stimulus and the response or the response and the stimulus. In terms of role of the learner for classical conditioning, it's a passive process where originally for Pavlov's dog, the dog salivated at the unconditioned stimulus, the meat. Then eventually through the acquisition stage after repeated pairings, eventually it reflexively salivated to the sound of the bell in anticipation of food. For operant conditioning, it's an active process where the learner responds or operates on the environment based on whether behavior previously has been reinforced or punished. 